Nice. No wife. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. So, no issue. So, I was explaining about the levels of test execution. Earlier, uh, last class, we discussed a little bit about the software testing life cycle. Uh, if anybody could uh, recall some of it, uh, we discussed about the test initiation stage. Uh, that is like primary testing uh, uh, stage, which will be conducted uh, between pri project manager and test lead, test manager, and they will come up with the test strategy document and the document will be forwarded to test lead right and test lead with the would uh, prepare a pro document called test uh, plan document which will consist of all the uh, basic details and uh, related to performance testing automation testing manual testing everything that would basically uh, answer a few questions like who will test why you are testing what you will test and how you will test like and when you will test. So these questions will ask like who will test related to who or role, who roles and responsibilities are what. Then refers to the schedule when you are going to test mock test, when you are going to test uh, regression test, when you are going to test, uh, when you are going to automate this. How you refers to manual or automated or performance, what are the tools, how you are going to test with what tools and everything. And uh, why you will test because you have to that is a basic question so that is to make the application bug free that is that why that is why and what else who when when is the schedule who uh, roles why how and what what you will test so what are the scope what are the different aspects of application you are going to test okay so those are the things we discuss then in the test design stage that is the main important thing uh, in terms of you write, you need to write the test case and stuff so you already have an idea right how to write a test case and i gave you some homework i'm sure you must have done that and then we are going to test how many levels of test execution would occur because the fourth one in the stlc is test execution once you design the test cases then you have to execute them right so execution occurs in many levels and the first and foremost level is called level zero and uh, as you can see the screen that will be conducted on the initial build all right initial build in the sense when the developer gives the, his first code first piece of code to deployment people who are called infrastructure team and they will basically deploy that into test environment and you need to perform this and this would be first test would be called smoke test and this would be repeating for each build smoke test is the first test for each dot build so whenever the developer comes up with something you need to test it and you need to conduct the smoke test and uh, if there are any issues they will fix it and then they will come up with stable build and on this stable build you need to conduct a level one testing which is also known as real testing detailed testing, comprehensive testing. Okay, so basically you must have written like 50 test cases or so at this point of time. And uh, smoke test is just a, just like an important testing, like I told you, it should not take more than 15 minutes, only important features will be tested, right? And in the stable build, you need to run a thorough testing, the whole, 50 or 60 test cases that you have written, you have to run all those. That means obviously initially manually, but later on automated. And uh, let's say in the stable build, you have come across some defect, like five defects. So out of 50 test cases, 45 test cases have passed and five test cases have failed, let's say. Okay. Then what you are going to do, you need to report these defects in the bug tracking tool, something like Jira or whatever. Okay, so then the defect, uh, these defects will be assigned to the appropriate developers and they will fix them. And once they fix them, they will again give this fixed code to the deployment team and they will build it. And this build is called fixed build because they will pretty much come include the hard fixes. That means the defect fixes which you have encountered in the stable build, real testing. Okay. 
and uh, on this six bill you need to conduct a another level of testing that is level 2 testing which is called retesting okay because you are testing it again the kind of testing is called retesting so retesting is primarily to test only the defects whatever defects are fixed are supposed to be fixed uh, you you are retesting the same and let's say you retested them and found that four of the five defects have passed right and one defect is failed so again you go back to developer and then again you tell them oh, hey one defect is still not working so they will again refix it and you need to retest this so this level 2 co continuous uh, goes on and on until all defects have been thoroughly tested positively okay then they will come up with another modified build with all the defect fixes the remaining defect fixes and everything and uh, that would be your level 3 testing on which you need to connect and this time what you're going to do you need to let's say you passed on to next sprint okay so you have around uh, 100 test cases and that particular sprint only consists of five test cases okay so the modified build pertains to if you move on for the more sprints okay so then you need to run the whole suite the back suite which you have to regress basically so let's say at the point of time you must have written 200 plus test cases and because the developer fixed something and they must have broken something and you were not sure about it and obviously you have to make sure that's your primary job so you have to run whole test cases again and this particular testing is called regression testing so the difference between retest and regression testing is retesting is done only on the defects and regression testing is done on all the test cases just to make sure whether the defect fixes have not broken the existing functionality okay so just to make sure you have to run and this is where the automation testing comes into picture right because the number is enormous 200 and it would take a lot of time if you run manually so automation testing later on stages will be applied okay so let's say you have come include uh, you have done all the regression testing and 200 test cases have been successfully passed okay so then the final build will be there just before like uh, uh releasing and on this testing a post-mortem testing will be conducted or final regression just to make sure if anything is missed out or not and that uh level of testing is called level 4 testing and final regression testing okay so the same thing i try to elaborate here level zero testing is smoke testing or sanity testing or tester acceptance testing or octangle testing these are all synonyms okay any one of these terms is used you should be able to know it immediately and what is the basic things that are tested in level zero testing level zero testing or level zero testing test cases will be written in such a way that they will cover the understandability, controllability, operability, operability, and observability, consistency, simplicity, and maintainability, and automatable. Okay. So automatable definitely yes, because smoke test has to be done every day on uh, every uh, daily or nightly basis, nightly build. Okay. So and and they have to be comprehensive, but still very portable. I mean, still uh, still should not take more than 15 minutes and the results must be observable okay clearly and they should be consistent in nature and they should be simple because if you conduct a thorough testing it would take a lot of time so obviously you need to put very minimal number of steps and they should be maintainable because the smoke test need to be updated every uh, every uh, other build or something so because the uh, new requirements are uh, updated requirements keep on coming so you need to be maintainable Ma they need to be maintainable okay manual testing versus automation so basically whenever you write test cases you execute them manually in the sense you look at the steps with your eye and you execute on the application with your hands look and execute that's a manual testing and you take the screenshots at appropriate intervals wherever you need to validate something and put them in the report and the final verdict will be mentioned like pass or fail or block so pass in the sense all the steps have passed then the total test case is set to be passed 
if any of the steps have failed then the whole test case is said to be failed and you are not able to proceed further because some step is not working like login is not working so you said to be you call it a block test case because you are not able to proceed it's neither for neither pass nor fail but black block okay so same thing if you do automated fashion using uh, different tools like selenium or driver or UDB or any other tool then you don't need to run them manually so obviously you will run them just by click of button or without it if you push it to CA tool continuous integration tool like Jenkins automatically that will trigger uh, after the deployment so and that would also do the same thing it should take the screenshots and provide pass fail or blocked result verdict at the end of it and real testing level one testing obviously you need to conduct real testing so real testing by the name itself uh, it says you have to conduct thorough testing verifying all functional tests without any fail like launch of application launching test case perform each step on the test case on the application specify the actual result right the expected result will be there and you have to write the actual result at the time of execution only that's why it is left empty uh, just for the uh, execution time okay and you need to specify the word each if pass proceed to the next step otherwise not and then come to level two testing that is the retesting defect fixes testing and regression testing you already know how it is a verification of all defect functionalities and surrounding areas that means basically you have to write whole bunch whole suite and defect tracking is done at this point or in the retesting or regression testing also you might come across more defects because because of the defect fixes they might have broken some existing functionalities and you whatever defects you will come across those are called as regression defects whatever defects you come across at the retesting those are called retesting defects and obviously for these two levels you need to report these defects and that is called as defect reporting and there are different tools such as jira quality center bugzilla alm so it all depends on the project what kind of tools they are going to use and importantly you need to provide some basic info in the defect defect title is important because by the title they will know exactly what is the defect about just in one liner for example login functionality is not working so you just mention est test one environment login functionality not working so that exactly uh, at least on first level they will have an idea without looking inside and description will be in, de in detail exactly what is not working user id is not working or something or any other application uh, feature is not working you have to provide in detailed manner and that has to be provided in the description section there will be description section and uh, that's the textual but the, if you provide a visual like graphical format like screenshot it would be more understandable so without even write, reading the description they will immediately i uh, understand who developers right and whatever test data you have used that would be helpful too because uh, the developer may not be having an idea what kind of data you are using if you provide they will replicate it and uh, in some jira or any other tool these sections will be automatically there so some will be auto populated like defect id it will automatically populate okay this was a previous id it will provide 94 so it will be incremented and defect description like i said you have to provide okay so let's say after entering h uh, h so and so submit button is enabled so the like the last example i gave you policy a and upon selecting policy a and if you are entering ajt submit button should be enabled right and it should be disabled if, if it is age less than 80 and greater than 35 it should be enabled but more than that it should not be but for 80 it is enabled that is an issue okay so we mentioned that here and there are builds maintained and you need to provide the build number you can ask the deployment team because they need to exactly know what build you got this error otherwise they will not be able to they, uh, fix them and uh, functionality this is the functionality i gave you right insurance policy page with a policy type and age okay so that if you remember it here i gave you the homework 
and you must have written that verify if policy is selected from drop down each object should be there are three objects drop down xbox and a button i showed you in the diagram itself you can actually imagine let's say this is just a requirement and there is no use case for it I and mean, there is no screenshot for it so you should be able to visualize and write the rest case still so if policy is selected from drop down age object should be focused and age is entered as 18 yes submit button is enabled so base uh, that is a test case but original requirement is somewhere here i provided it yeah so this somewhere i provided this is a test scenario but original requirement is like age less greater than 18 and less than 18 okay submit button should be enabled otherwise disable so if you provide 80 something like this this is particular test case that's why it did not give greater than 18 and less than 80 okay but if you take 80 strictly 80 then it should be disabled and you actually got it enabled so that is an issue then you have to report it right so you are reporting with the detailed description exactly what you are encountering in what you encountered and which test case you got this issue and you provide that test case number is it reproducible yes or no you say yes and uh, that would be a thorough question you say yes or no whatever the case may be and severity priority and uh, i'll discuss more about this severity is representing how soon you want this what is the major impact if it's not fixed and priority represents how what is the priority or how soon you want this to be fixed and these there are two these are two different things i'll discuss more about this in detail later and you attach the screenshot okay initial uh, Stage of this defect will be new because you just opened it and you uh, let your test lead know or test manager know, and they will open it for you. And because they would know who to assign this defect to, they would assign this defect to a development uh, member, and then it stage will be assigned now, assigned or assigned. Okay, and developer takes a look at it and he will. the check if it can replicate it or not if it cannot replicate it will term it as cannot replicate again you will have to provide him more details and ask uh, him to re replicate again and let's say he says this defect is invalid because it's not matching the require it's actually working according to the requirement and maybe a car requirement is false so you, they will ask you to check back with the the business analyst team then again this goes back and forth if you differ with it if you actually uh, do not agree with it you can always say hey this is valid uh, you are not saying you are saying valid but it is actually valid you provide the reason okay and let's say defect is accepted actually and he fixes fix the fix right then he will mark it as a fixed the developer thinks he has fixed so he will mark it as fixed all right then he gives the build to the deployment team and they will mark it as ready to build and once it is built and they will mark it as ready to test that means you are going to retest here this is where you are going to conduct the retest or revision test whatever the case may be during which stage you got this error and you tested it positively that means no issue then you will close it okay if this is failing you reopen it again it comes back to here open stage again assign to the same developer or different developer again goes to these stages again this cycle will repeat until it is successfully closed so this is the end of the defect life cycle okay this is the beginning and this is the end and this is a cycle because it uh, repeats until the defect is completely fixed okay so there are some basic nomenclature uh, pertaining to what is the very thin line difference is there so error error means mistake in coding okay is as you somebody finds a mistake in coding that is termed as error and defect is issue identified by tester so you say okay you got some error and you are raising a defect and that is still defect 
until it is confirmed as positive not invalid but he actually validates i mean it's a valid defect there is no such thing as valid state but it is not an invalid state that means it is valid state then it is termed as a bug so that is the difference between error defect and bug and uh, you need to understand the difference in order to answer a question or understanding the process okay there are some basic defect resolution types okay and what would happen if those are the resolution types that developer or tester or manager or deployment team member term it as so so a defect is duplicate okay the developer has found out that there is another defect of same nature and you raised it again the same issue maybe that is possible because other test member has encountered same issue and reported it already and then it would be marked as duplicate and duplicate defects will not be fixed because it already in progress are fixed already so it will be rejected and rejected directly goes to closed class last is closed okay and enhancement defect enhancement defects are in rejected because they have no time at least in the agile sprint and they will be rejected or deferred okay for now it is rejected and they won't close it they will defer it to future release that means they will postpone it because it's enhancement it's not pertaining to the current uh, existing uh, requirement but you actually raised an issue about a possible enhancement and it will be looked into later and there are some hardware limitations and uh, obviously defect cannot be fixed by developer they will reject it and closed because of the hardware limitation and due to software limitations same thing they will reject it and close these are very rarely occurring scenarios so no issue and need more info so you provided some limited info in the description and they would need more info so they will term it as need more info there will be another stage i did not provide all the stages there will be many and you can customize it according to tool so there will be 20 50 also so these are the important stages so you need to know these and need more info and that is subject to discussion and you provided more info and then that will be fixed or closed okay not reproducible so basically you can reproduce in your environment and uh, developer cannot reproduce so obviously you have to discuss again and base finally you have to ask the developer to come and sit with you and you convince him and it will be fixed again by developer and finally it will be closed and no plan to fix it no plan to fix it means uh, they cannot even defer there is no plan to fix it even in the feature releases immediately it will be closed fixed obviously this is a positive once it is fixed it will move on to the closed because it will be accepted and deferred accepted but postponed so these are the deferred means deferred means accepted but postponed okay say during the defect logging defect site ticket logging you need to provide two important aspects of defect that is severity and priority okay severity and priority so when i say severity it refers to how bad it affects the functionality okay and priority means how bad it affects the business now this is the basic difference now i will give you some examples okay uh, because based on different different severities and different different priorities like there will be three severities and three priorities high medium and low high medium and low okay so let's take a look at each of these uh, stage uh, severity levels and priority levels in terms of examples so that way you will understand better so user interrail interface related defects any user interface related defects if you come across you need to term it as low severity okay there will be numbers also high means one medium two low means three okay so it's all dependent on the personalization policy but this is a hard and fast one. user interface related defects will be or should be termed as low severity such as filling mistakes you found some filling mistake instead of user name it is termed as user name okay that's the filling mistake and uh, 
the low severity i am fixing the severity okay that's the priority now okay priority should be high because it is visible immediately it is visible and it's bad for the business so high priority but low severity okay this is here i am fixing the severity changing the priority that's the whole uh, that's how i designed the example let's say complex meaning in labels okay let's say you put a user id password wrongly and what should it say in the id is id password right that is simple but instead it said something like invalid user id and also invalid comp invalid password but you need to either provide either valid or uh, not just uh, either valid or in uh, valid password or valid user id but you have to provide both invalid and valid user id and valid password okay so let's say that is sentence and obviously that is very complex and you need to ask them to change it at least from the business point of view business uh, requirement point of view so these kind of uh, issues are medium priority okay they are still okay but medium priority but low severity though severity is low because it's all interface related not function related let's say object alignment user id is on the right side and password is left side little bit not very aligned so that is low priority and low severity okay low severity and low priority okay so let's move on to medium severity one medium severity and we will combine it with all priority error handling defect error handling defect so okay you are expecting an error upon entering valid valid user id in the password let's say and there is no error message at all and it is actually working fine so that is high priority because it's not supposed to work and it works medium severity but high priority okay wrong error message and uh, you are actually entering user id password related uh, uh, thing and you entered wrongly but it is showing your account number is wrong so that is totally irrelevant wrong error message so you categorize it as a medium priority and medium priority complex meaning and we have seen anything related to complex meaning in error message or anything will be low priority obviously and low medium severity because it's error and related okay so now high severity anything related to input value related input values or termed as high severity and let's see how this uh, high severity defect uh varies with different levels of different types of priority invalid credentials are provided but able to log in okay just like it should be so you provided wrong user id and password or either one of them is wrong then you are able to log in that is come termed as high priority and high severity also and not taking valid data so you are actually providing user id and password valid but it is not actually allowing you to log in and that is high priority and high severity as well both are same thing high priority high severity high priority now taking valid data exceeded size so let's say user id is supposed to be between 3 to 30 characters and 30 first character is also is acceptable it is actually signing the successfully so that is medium priority but high severity taking invalid data without lower case it's a type related right ecp this is related to ba this is ecp ecp is failed that means even if you provide even if it is uh, no special character special character is working with you and that is term is low priority but high priority and there are some calculation defects like so you are applying uh, you are actually booking a flight ticket and you are supposed to valid the total price and the total price is not coming at all that is term is high priority and high priority because total price is very important wrong output so total price is they displayed as wrong it is not calculated correctly so that is medium priority but high severity okay and correct output but some symbol is not working dollar symbol in the total price you don't know is dollar or pound or rupee right so those kind of things are termed as low priority but still high severity okay and some performance related issues application is not working for multiple users the performance is not related to manual or automatic testing if uh, they tested for 500 users and only 498 users is working two users are not fine uh, uh, they are actually running in the sign up or registration uh, stage only 498 
the roads have been inserted in the database because once the train is there, it will go through the process. And the two are missing because of some issue. So that actually high priority, high priority. So because it's very important, even though two are missing, it still uh, need to be taken care from the uh, performance point of view. Working for some users, but not for the exceeded expected users. Medium priority because. SLS is 500 is the limit, but they also tested for 550 and the same. Okay, but it's not important as important as uh, this one, but still important and medium priority ones will be postponed a little bit later for the fix. And configuration related, so these will be termed as medium severity, and uh, these will look like device is not working. I try UI device is not working, okay, or uh, the Jenkins machine is not working. So those kind of issues are found as high priority, but medium severity. Device is not working, but output is wrong, okay. So these are found as medium priority. Correct output, but alignment is not proper, let's say, okay. And these will be termed as medium severity, but low priority. Help sources always, like any uh, product or software uh, comes along with them. Help sources, right? There will be right top corner help or contact as well, whatever. And these and with the manual, whatever documents, help related documents are not getting displayed. And these will be termed as medium severity but high priority. Wrong help message, medium priority, medium severe. Complex help message, like complex sentences, these will be termed as low priority, medium severity. ID control defects. Or termed as a low severity, so such as complex logos, logos in the sense anything that is symbolically represented for the company, or the whatever below uh, page they have to provide some privacy policy or copyright terms and conditions. These links are not displayed at all, okay, and these will be termed as it doesn't affect anything, but that's fine. Low priority, you can fix them later. Low priority means. We can fix them later, later on. Okay, so that's the whole uh, process of determining what is the priority and what is the severity at the time of defect raising. So you need to understand these because you need to provide the correct priority, correct severity. If you provide, instead of medium, if you provide low severity, it will be provide uh, fix it later so if you provide the for low severity defect you actually come to this high priority then it's not good because there will be other priority ones they need to take care of so you actually have to understand and provide the correct for, for priority and severity otherwise they will come up, come back and say why did you provide this okay so this is the defect stage defect tracking stage so so far we we'll discussed Test initiation stage, then second is test planning stage, third is test design stage, fourth is test execution stage, fifth is de defect tracking stage, and the last but not the least, test closure stage. Okay, so that means all the defects have been fixed, all the testing has been done, and finally, it's the time to decide about go or no go. That means whether to release the software or not for the particular release. So the PM project manager, TM test manager, and TLT test lead will sit and discuss. And what we talk about is they will look at the report of defects and trace requirement traceability matrix and registration report and see how many defects are still backlogged and how many are not fixed. Are they important for this case? Can we postpone them and all this discussion will take place? And finally they will decide what go or no go. That means whether to go and release this software or don't go and release this software. So go or no go means just hold, hold on. So no go, no go means just for the temporary, for the for current release, do not release, but the main release is for the future things. And the coverage analysis definitely will be done, like I said, RTM, requirement traceability matrix will be provided and they will look at the relationship between the requirements, the cases, defects. And decide about this. And uh, RTM, requirement traceability matrix, basically uh, is mapping between test cases, requirements, and defects. And 
even though there are any defect left or like two or three defects those are called golden defects and a final defect uh, uh, testing will be done and that particular testing is called yellow box testing right and once this is testing is done this will take couple of hours only not days and the final is they will conduct a sign off meeting in that they will discuss about what are the deliverables and what are the deliverables our testing uh, team will provide a strategy document a plan document a case document defect reports and rpm requirement is ultimate okay that is the end of the test stage okay so i have provided some examples and in addition to those you can write test cases about these you can come up with any go to any kayak site like uh write some test cases about go to kayak dot com and book supplies to and pro for two persons and validate total price this is a test case okay so this is a test scenario and you have to chunk it up into steps and that will be called as test case so test scenario is nothing but test possibility okay so this is one possibility based on the requirement and there may be more possibilities and each possibility you implement them de in detail and that is called a test case obviously they have to be in step by step uh, manner and uh, okay these are couple more examples you can come up with your own so for example you need to sign up for gmail with both valid and invalid user id okay so that means already used used and non used one how it or what you are expecting and what you are getting at the time of execution so you need to provide all those details in the test case documents okay so you do this because this is very important and uh, you come up with more and add them and write test cases i think few few people wrote some test cases i checked in the homework section and uh, the more you practice the better for you so because this is the primary task for you uh from the manual testing perspective all right and uh, we talked about some acronyms during right so i provided a little bit glossary here tm quality manager tm test manager tl means test lead ke sometimes refer to as so in which gte st senior test engineer or junior test engineer and tc technical consultant okay and uh, so i shared some of these documents test case documents and agile related i'll share our team documents also i'll share so mostly 